Good morning and welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing. My name is Ryan McGinley, at the Ryan McGinley, and today I'm joined by Aidan McDonald at Aidan C. McDonald on the Twitter handle. Aidan, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, I'm good, Ryan, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. It's good that we've finally got some games to talk about or a game that's already happened that we've, that we've seen. I know we won't touch upon it too much, but um, yeah, before, before we get started, uh, if I could just direct everybody to the ticker tape at the bottom of the screen. Um, subscribe to the Celtic Way website and support top quality football journalism covering the club you love. Visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Um, today we've got Tony Haggerty's big match verdict on yesterday's 6 4 defeat to Yokohama. We've also got scouting reports in the mix. We've got a scouting report on Teddy that was out a few, I think it was last week, but you know, it's that's. That's public mainstream news. It's a, it's a name that isn't going away. So if you if you want to check that out, that's on the website as well. Um, I, I don't want to talk about the the friendly too much because we we did cover it on the pre match and the post match shows on the on on the channel. But Aidan, j- just to get your sort of reflections on that game, so I, I just under twenty four hours later. Yeah, I mean it's probably similar to most people's thoughts in that. The problems that we could see in the Celtic team are issues that we already knew were there. Probably without Carter Vickers and Alistair Johnson, the defence is a bit weaker. There's maybe a couple of reinforcements needed in there. And Joe Hart can, at times, be solid enough, which you see when he did pull off a couple of saves, but he's always maybe got a mistake in him, etc. And he's probably ideally or really not going into the season with him as number one. So, overall, I didn't feel from a defensive standpoint anyway we learned anything new. Also, it's frustrating to lose six goals, but I think at least three of them are probably just down to fitness. And the fact you are playing a decent enough team as well, we shouldn't underplay the fact Yokohama, G League champions, etc. Going forward, that, that was probably where I found it a bit more interesting. Maida kind of through the middle at times. Maybe that's something we'll see a bit more of this season. And mm-hmm. potentially one of the reasons that Rodgers was keen to get him signed up on a new deal, because he maybe sees a different role for him. Or, I know he's played it before, but predominantly during his time at Celtic, he's been a winger, so... Yeah, it was it was interesting to see that. He also done well getting his hat trick. Hitati played extremely well also. But yeah, overall, I, I try not to read too much into pre-season games and the sort of deficiencies in the team were things that we've kind of been discussing already over the summer. So good to see the team back in a way, but hopefully we can maybe concede a few more or less goals in, over the course of pre-season. Yeah, Tony was saying he's hoping for a clean sheet at the weekend. Um, hopefully that is the case against Gamble Sack. It's always good to get into these good habits in pre-season and get out of bad habits, which would be conceding six goals. You know, I was saying that conceding six goals in a European game would be unacceptable, so to concede it in a friendly. Um, I, I think there was a lot of people, especially online, that were a wee bit panicky after the game. It was, I mean, I know I know the team conceded six goals, but they scored four. You know, it was a... Uh, it wasn't exactly like a drubbing or anything. It was only two goals in it. Um, I know, I know David Turnbull's goal at the end made it look a, a bit more respectable. But it shows that on one end of the park, Celtic can score goals, and it was good to see Maeda. I know you were talking about Maeda with his uh, change of position. That could potentially be his new position going forward. I mean, I know, I know you've got he can play on the left wing, can play on the right wing as well at times, but. That's the role he played for Yokohama and for the Japanese national team. Brendan Rodgers obviously sees something in him that he can he can make a difference. I think I don't I don't know about you, Aiden, but I think that could be a massive weapon to have in, on the European stage in terms of counter attacking. Having Maeda's pace on the break can can really hurt teams, and it, it it was shown yesterday against Yokohama. Yeah, I think there's kind of two ways to look at it. I think you are correct in that it will allow Celtic to maybe counter-attack a wee bit faster in Europe if he's through the middle. I just don't know if I'd want to be sacrificing not playing Kyogo in a game like that. I know he struggled in the Champions League last year, but still think he's far and away the best forward at the club. And yep. Probably when you have uh, Maeda out in the wing, that maybe allows you to get both players in the team. Whereas whether or not Kyogo would, Rodgers would look to play him out wide, I know. The odd time under Angie did play in that position, but it wasn't really as effective. So it's interesting, it's something else to think about, and maybe it puts to bed potentially Celtic getting another striker in if he's looking to potentially put Maeda through the middle. With the caveat being, obviously, I know there's the, the Asian Cup in January, which I don't need to discuss too much because we've been over that. So there would then be a hole up front if you didn't get a player. And you could just imagine Maeda, Kyogo and O are all going to be called up for that, but... 
yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on it. But it was definitely that was a pleasant surprise and probably the most interesting thing I took away from the match, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think we'll move away from the, the Yokohama result because you know that's in the past now, and we Tony and I've spent ages talking about it. It's, it's Yokohama's just coming off our turns now, basically. That it's it's on to Gamba Lusaka at the weekend, but. I think what that game did show is that reinforcements are needed. Um, just to go into the sort of first uh, sort of transfer rumours that have been going about or transfer developments. Uh, Brendan Rogers uh, yesterday, I think it was, I think it was in the Daily Record or, or some other publication, was saying that he hasn't even heard of the two players that Celtic have been linked with in the past forty-eight hours, and Mohamed Reda of Future FC and uh, Ferreira from uh, Gremio, Gremio in Brazil. Uh, I don't know about you, Aidan, but it feels, to, it seems to me as, as if this is a sort of, you don't want it to be another shred scenario, but if these two players were to come in after Brendan Rodgers saying this, would, would the alarm bells be going for you if these two players were to come through the door after Brendan Rodgers coming out and saying that you'd never heard of them? I, I don't know if the alarm bells would be going. I understand the immediate comparisons with the, the shred transfer on that extent, and obviously... That was the beginning of the end for Brendan Rodgers and his first spell at Celtic. Uh, uh, to be honest, I think spending what was going to be up to £6 million on the boy from Brazil, that would probably be seen as almost like a marquee sign or one of your biggest outlays. So I don't think it would be quite the same as Shred, who I believe the club got on quite a small fee, mm-hmm. probably coming from a bit of a weaker league at that time in the sort of uh, Ukrainian league to the Brazilian league. But... I don't know. I think it's probably unlikely, definitely, now that you said that. Obviously, there's, you know, there is always in the back of your head managers kind of playing mind games to sort of put people off the, the scent if it's because another club's interested in those players. They don't want somebody else maybe trying to bounce in and take their bid or they just don't want people reporting on it. But the way he kind of spoke did say to me that they're probably not, uh, probably not arriving at Celtic anytime soon. But whether or not I would say off alarm bells, I don't know if I'd be quite as maybe as worried as yourself Ryan on that one but well I can understand why to an extent after the shred thing because that regularly gets pinpointed as kind of the beginning of the end for Rodgers but I'd be hoping that wouldn't be a cut so early in his first pre-season in his second spell but obviously we'll just need to keep an eye on it. Yeah I'm I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I'm so worried about it but for me Brendan Rodgers says a lot in his press conferences without saying too much he's got a way of He's got a way of relaying messages as to, and you can and you can read between the lines as to what he's meaning by that. I think what he's meaning is that these players aren't anywhere near being close to signing for the club. I think it's just, I think it's just outlets putting two and two together, and making five with regard to some of the players. Uh, Freya is at, at Gremio just now. He looks like a, a pretty decent player, but I, I did tweet the other day saying that his injury record is a massive concern. The muscle injury two seasons ago and the big hamstring injury last season, it's really curtailed his, his development and his sort of first team action. I think he's a, I think his appearances have been inflated as well on transfer market when I was looking at them because I think a lot of his, his appearances were made for the B team rather than the A team, so it makes him look as if he's been playing a lot, but in reality he's hardly been playing whatsoever. Um, I've, I've got to be honest, I don't know too much about Mohamed Reda and he plays in the Egyptian. Egyptian top league for future FC um, seems to be a, a completely different market that Celtic would be would be shopping in if they were going for for a, a player such as himself. But he seems pretty highly rated. Again, it's probably agents putting two and two together trying to get their players the best possible move. We've seen this before, you know. But we, we didn't turn Celtic fans yesterday. We 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 get this every single summer of players wanting wanting a better move and probably using Celtic as a name to do so. Um, and, and then there was obviously the, there was the reporting last night in the Daily Mail of uh, Xavier Mbayamba, who is the, the topic of the, of, of the headline of this video today. Um, uh, this, uh, Stephen McGowan was saying that he's high on, his list, on Brendan Rodgers' list of defensive targets, a 21-year-old that plays at, at Volendam in the Dutch Eredivisie, who just, uh, I think he staved off relegation last season, or they, they just about avoided it. But he was previously part of Barcelona and Chelsea's academies, so I think that can give you a sort of gauge as to what sort of player he is. Just Aiden, uh, what's, what's your thoughts on the on the M by Amber link? It's, it seems as if it's more of a player that Celtic should be getting linked for this young talent that we can develop. I think in terms of the sort of transfer model, it's the ideal age profile: twenty-one year old, 
centre back, which I'm sure he probably both agrees a position said they need to get a player in, regardless if Carter Vickers is available for the start of the season. It's an area that Celtic probably need to be recruiting somebody else in. Looks like an interesting player. He's obviously been through, as you were saying, a relegation battle recently came out the other end of that. So he's got the experience of having to be right under pressure, which I don't think is a bad thing in terms of the sort of level of expectation would be on him at Celtic. I guess with a lot of these players, which you can say for a good chunk of the squad signed, would be the jump up if he's having to come in and play Champions League. Now, if Starfield and Carter Vickers are both fit, probably unlikely they'd be an immediate starter at the moment anyway, because they're when they're both available, they're the two sort of I mean first choice centre backs. But his profile definitely fits into the sort of guys that Celtic have been wanting to sign over the last couple of years. And I think he's been linked before as well. I can't remember if it was January or last summer, but there has definitely been links with him. Would, would I be right in mm-hmm. saying that? Yeah, it was. I think it was actually about two or three months ago. He was one of the. It was first even less, even less ago, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I think it was Tony and I. Um, I was I was fairly new into into doing the briefings, and I remember his name. His name stands out. Xavier Embriamba. It, it rolls off the tongue, and that's obvious because we have spoke about him before. So I've gotten used to that that forename and the surname. But, um, he has been linked with the club before, two or three months ago, when Ange Postecoglou was the manager, but. I don't think that's anything to worry about as well because Celtic have got to keep their scouting targets the same. If they were doing work in the summer eh, or, or before the summer, then you'd think that those those eh, those transfer targets would be consistent. Brendan Rodgers can just get the final yes or no on them. But if they're good enough, then they'll come in and, and, and develop the team. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's also what's probably happened with Oden Tiago home and eh, Marco Tellio. You'd imagine they were on a list already before Rogers was probably even negotiating to come back as manager. But then he would have, he would hope, have had final say over those players. He's had a look and thought he can do something with them. So, yeah, and maybe this guy would be falling in that same category. But it just it's a position that I think Celtic desperately need recruitment, and that doesn't mean that uh, you chump at the first player available. Of course, you need to get mm. the right individual that can come in, but. Age profile wise, the fact that he was under a bit of pressure last season, he seems to have come through it. Seems to be in the sort of brief, brief things that I've seen of him, seems to be relatively capable with the ball at his feet. There, the Vizzy, well, it's maybe not as strong as it once was. Definitely, we wouldn't dispute that it's probably stronger than the majority of the Scottish League. And overall, it is probably a better quality league. So he's got that experience. The, the thing would be can he make the step up in Europe, Ryan? But. Mm-hmm. If that was putting you off signing players, then Celtic wouldn't have brought in a lot of the individuals that they have over the last few years, particularly all the, the players from Asia, etc. So, yeah, I, I think it would be a relatively positive signing, but I would need to see a wee bit more of them before being able to give a sort of final opinion on whether or not I can come in and challenge for one of the starting centre-back positions. Yeah, it's, it's very much a, a watch this space with Ember Yamba, but six foot five Dutch defender does sound pretty good to me in that in that defence. So I think it's a defence that it is good at defending, especially when it's Carl Vickers and Carol Starfield in the in the back line. But to get a wee bit of height would be great, especially in in a sort of well for defending but attacking as well in terms of uh, in terms of corners. You, you would want you would want Celtic to be scoring more headers from corners and. It's certainly a guy that's six foot five that can certainly put himself about would be would be a good help towards that. I know Maurice Shens was a bit of a goal threat as well when he was at Celtic, but obviously that never transpired and never signed permanently. Celtic cut his loan deal short, but having somebody that was six foot five would really be a danger in the in the opposition's box and a, a, a safety net in ours, you would say. Yeah, absolutely. When I was having a wee look at uh, this player last night, I think he'd scored five goals last season, all from set pieces. So it's a pretty good return. Celtic probably haven't had a regular sort of scoring centre half across even one season, maybe since Christopher Julian. I think in that nineteen twenty campaign he got five or six goals and I, I can't remember few, entirely eh? entirely, but the majority of them were from set pieces anyway. Probably the goals against Lazio and the, the goal in the League Cup final against Rangers being the two that are obvious standouts. So that's a positive uh, attribute to have. I know Starfield did get a couple last season. Carter Vickers has chipped in the odd time as well, but find if you, that's not obviously it's not the main priority when you're bringing in a defender. But if you're able to add somebody that can score five, six goals a season from set pieces as well, that's all another tick in the box for him in terms of his attributes that he can bring to the club. 
Yeah, and it, just before we get on to sort of potential outgoings at the club, I think yesterday did show that Celtic do need reinforcements in the defence anyway. I would say six goals conceded, plus the fact that Yuki, Yuki Kobayashi, who still, I don't think, has been that convincing at Celtic since, since he joined. He's had a couple of good games, but some really uh, standout games for the wrong reasons. I think I think Celtic do need another another central defender in there to sort of, to, to put the pressure on Starfield and Carter Vickers, you would say, because, um, I mean, even, even though Carter Vickers was a standout defender last season, you, you're just hoping he can come back from that injury and be the same player. Um, it's always good to have competition. Ember Yamba would certainly be that. Absolutely. That, that is a worry. When, no matter how good a player is, when he's coming back from an injury that's keeping him out for a while, is he going to be the same? Is he? I mean, he was never a slow player, Carter Vickers, but is he going to have like you know the same turn of pace? physically in the air, how long is it going to take him to readjust as well? He's not been out for like, you know, half a season or anything, but it has been a while since he played football. Obviously, it was the, the semi-final against Rangers was the last game, which is a wee while ago now. And yeah, it'd be brilliant to have him available for the game against Ross County or at least be able to bed him in. So he's had a couple of games before the match at Ibrox, which is the, you know, the fourth or the fifth game of the, the league season. I think it is. It's the fourth international <laughs> break. The third, does it? I, I don't. Well, fourth, no, it's the fourth. You're the right. fourth game, I just not long before the international break, if I remember rightly. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it'd be good to kind of get him in, even if he doesn't make Ross County, if he's available for Pataudry on the match after that. Just need to keep an eye on it. But, yeah, having somebody else can come in and challenge or challenge stuff on the other side is a, is a positive. And that, you want everybody coming in to be able to be a first choice. Really, in every position, maybe with the exception of your, you were buying a backup goalkeeper, which probably at the moment Celtic don't need a backup goalkeeper. They maybe need a first choice, which I know we've kind of discussed the death at this point. But yeah, everybody that's coming in, you want them to be able to challenge for a position in the first team. Yeah, uh, in that same article from the, the Daily Mail that, that broke last night or that, that was published last night, Abada was linked with Fenerbahce, uh, the, the Turkish league side, for around about a fee of £10 million. £10 million would, would sway Celtic. I don't know about you, but I, I feel like £10 million is a bit low for a player that has, what, four years, three, four years left in his deal, 21 years old, and was a goal threat, and, and he's an assist threat as well, you would say, judging by his his performance yesterday, he, he looks as if he's really in the mood to make an impact this season. So you'd think that that, that 10 million euros uh, that's getting quoted, or, or 10 million pounds, I'm not sure exactly what currency it was when it when it was reported, um, you'd think that that would be too low for a player of a baddest quality, would, would you reckon? I would agree. I mean, we know the deficiencies he's got in his game. He can kind of go long spells when he's maybe not contributing, but when he is involved, he's... He's always contributing, to be honest, to his mm-hmm. goals, assists, and you probably hard-pressed to find a, a player of a similar age that's putting up the exact same numbers of that that isn't starting every single week. So if you've seen somebody in other leagues that's probably putting up numbers like that, you'd imagine they're like one of the main players in their team, whereas a badder, particularly last season, there was long spells where the only game time he was getting, if he was getting any at all, was when he was coming off the bench, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I probably would be hoping for more than that for him, Ryan. Uh, because of the age profile, because of his numbers and the fact he's got three years left on his deal. Uh, obviously, Celtic will be trying to balance it and that. You might think, well, you keep him for another year, but then you don't get offered as much next season. But on the flip side, if Rodgers develops him even more over this campaign, if he gets another six Champions League games, at least under his belt, if not more, then he might be even more of a sellable asset the following summer because he'll still have two years on his contract that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it'll be an interesting one we'll have to keep an eye on. But I would be hoping you can maybe get a wee bit more than £10 million for a badder, personally. Yeah, I would say in terms of £10 million, uh, that would be the opening offer. I, I would believe, I'd believe that uh, that fee would go up significantly, or you would hope so. Um, I think yesterday... And I know I keep, I've said I won't talk about the Yokohama game too much, but I'm, I'm going back to it. Um, it seemed as if he did suit that counter-attacking style that Brendan Rodgers was trying to implement. Uh, Yokohama were pressing Celtic quite high up the pitch, but when Celtic got the ball and could, when Hitati got that half turn, Nabada was always ready for that run. He was always ready for that pass that was that was going to come through to him from Hitati. It seems as if that maybe a change in formation or a, a change in the mentality and the style of play that Rodgers will bring into the team 
would fit in Abada. And I know that Abada hasn't signed a new contract and there's been talks he's rejected quite a few. But, you know, if Brendan Rodgers can get his hands on him and, and, and sway him and, and maybe get him to sign like maybe a one or two year extension, then I think I think this season could be a, a, a breakout season for a, for a player like himself. Yes, his numbers are good, but I think they could go up a level as well. He, his numbers were consistent in 2021 and then 21-22. But what I was maybe hoping for last season was an increase in those numbers. And a lot of that was down to the fact that he, he wasn't really getting as much game time as he was the season before. I think I think Postacoglu did rely on him a wee bit because of just, just because of the way the squad was um, in, his, in his first season. He was still trying to gauge who could be in and out of the team. And then in that January, they signed Dyson Maida and he, he started taking a bad place in a number of games. But... I, I just, I just think a badder. There is so much potential there. He, he can be so infuriating to watch. He's, he's probably the most infuriating player to watch in this team for me, anyway. But when he's good, he's really good, and I think Celtic should be trying to keep a hold of that to, to hone what he's got, which is undoubted talent. Yeah, I mean, if if that's what the main offer is, and that's the only offer Celtic get, then I would be hoping that the club do keep him to try and develop him. And obviously, it's early days, but. I thought that sort of particularly first half yesterday is the best I've seen Abada for a while. Me too. Really effective. I mean, there's been games he scored goals in the last season, but he wasn't really involved outside of that. Whereas that first 45 minutes, he was really effective getting two assists and he also had played a role in, I think it was the third goal as well. Uh, playing it after Hitati's passed him, he then played at Awata, who crossed it in for Maida. So, no, he was showing exactly what he can offer from a counter-attack and winger's perspective there, which is maybe something that people have been critical of him, and that he, he's, his numbers are good, but he can drift in and out of games and can be guilty of not taking on his man and actually fulfilling his role in the team, which is a winger meant to create stuff at times. So, no, it was positive to see Abada yesterday uh, play that way, and that's probably the best I've seen him for. I don't want to go back and say as, as far as that 4-0 Rangers game last season, because that's a bit harsh, but the best I'd seen him for a good while, I would say, anyway. The game that I think the game that sticks out to me was the game where he came off the bench against St Mirren and he scored that, that wonderful goal at the the Smitha Stadium. He came, I think, he came off the bench and, and made a real difference. I think it was for Maeda. Maeda went off at half time and either half time or it was about 60, 50, 60 minutes in, and he, he turned the game. And I think he can be such a good impact player coming off the bench, but I think he'll be wanting he'll be at that stage where he wants to start games. He wants to be the star at Celtic now that. Now that Jota's gone, he can maybe be the poster boy in terms of the winger. You know, Dyson Maeda will get a lot of the credit for his work off the ball and he's running and pressing and his goals that he scored yesterday, obviously. But it may be a bad I can see himself as a sort of star of this team. And he's got all the talent to do so. So I'm I'm just hoping that I'm hoping that he can stay around at the club and, and fulfil his potential before making Celtic a good profit in the next couple of years. But I would say so far, um he's done himself a uh, He's done himself no harm whatsoever with regards to impressing the manager. Um, I know you were mentioning you were mentioning Awata there, who got the assist for uh, Maeda's fourth goal. I was actually quite impressed with him yesterday as well. I know he was playing out of position at right back, but I think that there shows you how important getting him in permanently was. I know it was an obligation to buy, but I'm glad that Celtic announced it as its own thing and it's an, its own like, news announcement because I think he's such a... He's such a versatile player. He can play in a number of positions, and in, a, in a, a season where Celtic will be playing in four, maybe five competitions, you need somebody that is going to be there and be available to slot in. So yeah, I was I was quietly impressed with Awata yesterday, and uh, hopefully see more of that to come from him. Yeah, I've liked what I've seen of Awata so far. Really going Me back too. to when he first came in at the club, even sort of short cameos in the League Cup final, in the League Cup semi final, big pressure games where. There was only a goal on it against Rangers, obviously the second best team in the country. And he looked pretty tidy on the ball. Didn't look like the occasion was getting to him. And obviously he's he's coming off still, really. A really good season with Yokohama. They won the league. He got J League Player of the Year, I believe. So yeah, he looks like he'd be a really good sign. The fact he can play a number of positions is helpful for the reasons you've outlined there, Brian. It's a long season. It's Celtic probably playing what at least 50, 55 games, even more than that, if you do managed to make it out of the Champions League group, so there's going to be a lot of football to be played, and while I would still be wanting Celtic to probably bring a right-back option in, even if Alistair Johnson eh, does recover relatively quickly, 
Uh, I think having a wack there that he can play centre half, he can play sort of CDM, he can play it right back. I think that isn't a bad thing. I know when we did the or when Tony and I saw he did the squad depth article or squad depth videos uh, last week, we had a wack came in as a midfielder. I think I also had him in as a midfielder with a predicted lineup, but it's also something we'll need to bear in mind when we're picking teams across this season that he could always be an option at right back. And yeah, I thought he was probably the only defender that really got pass marks. Degree, yesterday. Yeah, uh, me too. Even Greg Taylor, who, you know, phenomenal last season, contender for player of the year for a lot of people, and rightly so. He kind of struggled a wee bit. He kind of let his man go for at least one of the goals, I think it was. So, yeah, Awata was looked pretty solid yesterday. And I think in, in Scotland, particularly the games outside the Rangers, if he's playing right back because of an injury or a suspension or whatever, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Yeah, me too. I, I just just put to put a wee disclaimer. I'm not saying that I want him to be Celtic's yeah, second choice right back. I think it's very much a, a last resort, but a decent last resort at that because he can motor about the pitch. He's, he's clearly a very a very fit and able guy uh, to to get around the pitch. He's a sort of you don't want to call. He's probably more of a utility player than Hatati is in terms of. I know, I know Celtic rather jokingly labelled him as a utility player when he joined the club. Uh, just under two years ago, but I think Iwata is more like that. It gives me sort of Charlie Mulgrew vibes in which he can just play wherever the team needs him. Um, and, and that way he'll get a lot of appearances for the first team. So, you know, he won't be complaining. He'll still get game time. Um, so I was just going to go on to the, one of the final sort of talking points of today, which was Cal McGregor was had an exclusive sit-down interview with a, a media publication last night and he was revealing how he got in contact with Brendan Rodgers. Now, I, I don't know if Callum McGregor knows the, the definition of a top secret uh, meet-up, but it didn't see didn't sound as if he got the got the memo with regards to that. Um he was he was talking about how he got in contact with Brendan Rogers in Mallorca and they sat down for three hours uh, and spoke about the team and that's when he that's when he sort of knew that Brendan Rogers was a serious contender to come back to Celtic. So you, you see you hear stuff like that, even that just makes you think there's a there's a really good relationship between between the captain and the, the incoming manager, the fact that they've worked together before, and it was it was no secret that Brendan Rodgers was trying to get Cal McGregor down at Leicester City when he made the move down south. But the fact that they have managed to maintain that relationship, and now they're working together, both older, both wiser, in in that sense, it's it can only be good for the club going forward. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Brendan not just said it himself, he said a lot of things at that first press conference, as we know, firstly, that he did try and take Cal McGregor to Leicester City, which wasn't a surprise to a lot of people because it was being reported kind of at the time between that sort of 2019, 2020, even 2021 that he was interested. And he also had touched on that Cal McGregor was one of the big reasons that he came back to the club. I mean, he made McGregor know the player he is. I know Ronnie Dyla gave him his debut, and he did include him in some of the games until he picked up an injury that season. But it was Rodgers that developed his game and turned him into, in, in my opinion, anyway, a kind of elite level player, a top international that could get a game still for a lot of Premier League teams down south, probably maybe potentially any team outside of that top six. And yeah, he's been an outstanding servant, as we all know. The fact he's now captain, maybe Rodgers thought that that's something else I can maybe in, work with him with and take him up to the next level again. So, yeah, uh, we, we obviously knew about that meeting because Rodgers had mentioned it, but that, that relationship, I think, will be vital for Celtic being successful in this second spell under Rodgers. And, yes, yeah, it's, it's always good to hear that the captain and the manager's getting on. Yeah, it seems as if it seems as if Mallorca was the the hot spot in the summer um, or, or this summer because it seems as if everybody was meeting there. I know Odin Holm was talking about meeting Brendan Rodgers. I'm not sure exactly where they met. I, it might have been Mallorca as well, but it, it's good that all of these players are sort of retreating to to Mallorca to speak to the new manager, or, or he was the incoming manager at that time. Now he's the now he's the permanent manager. Just the, the sort of last new newsy sort of story before we end off today's briefing. Um, it's just it's just broken the past hour or two that Viaplay have pulled out of all their UK sport coverage. Um, it says it says in the article in the Daily Record is it, because it's a part of a a raft of cost cutting measures. Um, obviously that that has that that affects Celtic because of the 
because of the via play cup coverage, it won't even be called that anymore. Um, so you'll have the League Cup and the Scottish Cup. They're now up in the air. Um, it's just um, I know I know it's broken the last sort of one or two hours. But what's your opinion on this? It is a bit of a blow for Celtic the fact that the fact that there's no there's no sponsorship. It's it's quite up in the air as, as to where these where these matches are going to be televised. Um, and it it does make money for the clubs as well. So that'll be a bit of a problem area. Absolutely. I mean, firstly, I'm not really surprised that Scottish football and the people in charge of the game were negotiating deals with uh, a company who clearly it wasn't, you know, solidified that it was going to be a long-term option. When Viaplay came in, they were sponsoring the League Cup. I thought it was a good thing because it made a change from, you know, a gambling sponsor, etc. And some of the other maybe questionable uh, sponsors that the Cups and the Leagues have had over the years. But, yeah, it's a bit of a blow, particularly for when the, the League Cup's literally been airing on via play at the moment. Obviously, I know Celtic aren't involved, but there's group stage games, so it becomes a question of where the game's going to air. Now, it'll work itself out in time. There's no way we're going to go through a whole season where the Scottish Cup and the League Cup games, particularly the latter rounds and the semi-finals and the final aren't on the competition. I've always been of the opinion that all these Cups should be on uh, you know, BBC, STV, etc., that used to be the case. I don't know. I understand. Well, I don't know why it changed. It was a money reason, obviously. But the way that you know your European Championships, etc., your World Cups are still on those channels. I think it should be the case for the absolute bare minimum, the semi-finals and the final, but also probably the earlier rounds as well. They, they should point out they obviously. I know this won't apply to everybody that's watching this, but they also air the national team games for Scotland as well. So that's going to be up there ahead of the qualifiers that are coming later this year. So. Yeah, it's not really great news, Ryan, to be honest. Scottish football need to move quickly in terms of getting a new channel to show the games, whether or not the Scottish Cup rights will go back to Sky, etc. Obviously, originally went to Premier Sports, then they merged with Fireplay, I believe. But as far as I understand, the the uptake in subscriptions hasn't been anywhere near as positive as they were hoping. So they've basically been losing money, and that's why they've kind of pulled out of the UK market altogether, just to Focus back on a uh, Nordic uh, channels, yeah, I believe, Swe- was this uh, statement now. Yeah, it's a, it's a Swedish company. Um, they've, they've confirmed that they're ending all broadcasting in Britain, the USA and Canada, and they're laying off 25% of their staff. Uh, Jorgen Madsen Lindemann said that we are today announcing a new strategy and plan, which includes, but it's not limited to, focusing on our core Nordic, Netherlands and Viaplay select operations which make available a wide range of Viaplay series, films and documentaries through partners around the world. I'm just trying to see if there's any, because this, this is all basically filler. It's, it's nothing really to do with Celtic. Um, cost, major cost reduction programmes, immediate strategic review of the entire business to consider all options, including content, sub-licensing, asset disposals, equity injections, or the sale of the whole group. So it, it seems as if a, 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 this company and the, the CEO, they want out with regards to everything. And and, so, and the, the, the Scottish League and the Scottish uh, coverage is, is one of the first steps in order to do so. But it's it's good that it's not just Scottish football that's going through it. It's, not good, it's good that it's not just them that's getting dumped. It's, it's uh, the USA coverage and the, the Canadian coverage. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's, it's something that, the higher ups at Scottish football need to sort out. They need to sort out any deal, whether that be the new TNT Sports, which was a uh, BT Sports, which has been rebranded into TNT. If they maybe maybe take a slice, if Sky take another slice at Scottish football with regards to their coverage, they may just have a a full conglomerate of, of showing every single competition on the on the um, on their channels, or if BBC uh, fork out the money and. And get even more games, but you know it, it's still very much up in the air. With, in, is, is there anything you want to add to that, Eden, with regards to the via play? Because it's, I mean, it's it's very much up in the air at this point. We don't really know too much, other than the fact that via play very probably won't be showing a uh, showing a uh, league cup in, in Scottish Cup games this season. I guess the only thing to add is it's one less thing people need to subscribe to until they end up putting yeah. it on another channel that's not included in you know maybe Sky or TNTs. It's now known. Ideally, like the games go on BBC or STV, but I know I'm probably being a bit optimistic with that happen. Just need to keep an eye on it, but yeah, they'll need to move quickly because you know I believe the final's still this side of the year, isn't it, for the League Cup? So yeah, I think they've reverted they've it back to the format before. Obviously, it was mm-hmm. changed due to the World Cup last year. So yeah, they'll, they'll need to they'll need to kind of 
<laughs> move quickly because it's not having a sponsor as well. I know there was the, the League Cup for a long time, didn't really have a sponsor. It was obviously the Cooperative Cup, I think it was for a while, wasn't it? Kind mm-hmm. of like early 2010s, then it went, I think it was two or three years without even having a sponsor at all. So, yeah, I know it's not really Celtic related, but, or well, it is Celtic related, but it's not just about the club that we thought it was just worth touching on it. Given yeah, it's, it's a lot it's... of fans, it will, will affect maybe how they, they view things. I, I personally think what will happen is, at least for this season, TNT will probably pick up one of the two and Sky will pick up the other one, which is for a while how it worked when it was BT Sport had the League Cup, Sky the Scottish Cup, and then I think the final of that was still shown on BBC, which I know the final of the Scottish Cup was still on it's on normal television this year, but I think if you could get both competitions back on there showing all the games, that'd be a good thing, but I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Yeah, it's a very much watch this space with regards to what will happen and um, that's us been going for 35 minutes i think we've got through everything that we need we need to speak about uh, today just if i could draw everybody's attention to the ticker tape at the bottom once again if you enjoy what we do and you want to subscribe to the celtic Way website and support top quality football journalism covering the club you love if you visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe and also you can subscribe to the youtube channel we'll have a We'll have pre-recorded videos coming out very soon as well with regards to different topics. And if you if you click the notification bell, you'll be notified as, as to when we 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 go live, Aiden, uh, myself and Tony Haggerty as well. And if you subscribe to the website, then you you'll get um you'll get scouting reports, you'll get big match verdicts from Tony, such as yesterday, you get features, daily features, um, and opinion pieces as well. Um all that's left for me to say is thank you very much, Aiden, for joining me. Cheers, mate. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks again. And thanks to everybody in the comments for getting involved. I really appreciate it. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow at 10 a.m. tomorrow to discuss everything that's going on with Celtic. But until then, have a good day. Cheers.